Welcome back to the NRL Punters Weekly Digest, your one-stop shop for everything you need to know leading into this week's NRL matches. This is our Round 13 edition, which also happens to be the week before State of Origin Game 1, which has now been confirmed to have a venue that is not Melbourne because they're obviously in the COVID lockdown, so they needed to put the game somewhere else. It wasn't Canberra that they were playing the game. It wasn't Sri Lanka. That was my bet. No, it's Townsville. That's where we're playing the game. And a lot of New South Wales fans are unhappy about it. But hey, at least we've got the greatest spectacle of rugby league on this planet still going ahead despite all the COVID interruptions. I can't wait. Next Wednesday, next Wednesday June the 9th, up there at Queensland Country Bank Stadium. It's going to be a great game. Let's get into... This week's show, before I do that, I just want to run through my tips from last week. Wasn't the best week for me, a tip of five from eight. I had the Storm to win, specifically by 16. They won. I had Warriors by eight. They lost. I had Tigers by two. They won. Panthers by 40. They won. Rabbitohs by one. They won. Roosters by six. They won. Titans by four. They did not win. And Seagulls by 14. Surprisingly, they did not win either. They had probably, uh, I don't know, arguably one of their worst performances of the season. It wasn't terrible, but it definitely was not what we expected with respect to the outcome. Let's get into Thursday night's game. There's only four games this round, I should mention, because of State of Origin being next week. So eight teams have got the bye so we've pretty much got 50% of the games that we would usually have on a weekly basis this week, which makes it really easy for me to get through this show. And I'm going to zip through it because I've got a lot of other stuff that I'm working on at the moment that I need to get to. Let me know in the comments section below if I've missed out on anything. Let's get into the first game. Thursday, June the 3rd, St. George Illawarra Dragons take on the Brisbane Broncos at 7.50 p.m. from Net Strata Jubilee Stadium. Last start, the Dragons were losers to the Tigers in what was probably the Tigers' best performance of the year. They looked really, really good. That back line looks sublime. They've got a lot of things to look forward to at that West Tigers club. For the Dragons, though, who we're talking about right now, they were down 18-0 at halftime, and from there, they were never really in the fight. Uh, they completed at about 80%, but they just couldn't capitalize on their opportunities. For the Broncos, they got flogged by the Storm, which was really disappointing given that they won in their last start against the Roosters, which was a complete backs-against-the-wall kind of win. No one expected them to beat the Roosters, but they got it done. Couldn't get it done against the Storm. Went down 40-12 to against them. They conceded 1,772 run meters to 1,164, so that's nearly 600 more meters. That's more than 600 running meters more, which is really, really poor. You're not going to win many games from that position. They conceded eight line breaks to one, 44 tackle breaks to 28, and missed a whopping 44 tackles to 28. No good. In terms of team changes for both sides, for the Dragons, Matt Dufty, Josh Kerr, Michaeli Ravalawa return to the side. And the big inclusion is Jack DeBellin, who plays his first first grade game in over two years. Wish this bloke all the best of luck. He's been through a lot, and I'm sure he's still going through a lot. Hopefully, he can get through this one unscathed and hopefully help the Dragons to a victory. For the Broncos, Tyson Gamble and Matt Lodge return from suspension, and exciting rookie Selwyn Cobbo will debut. Now, from what I'm hearing, this guy's like a Latrell, Mitchell, Greg Inglis hybrid. Can't wait to see what that looks like. I'm guessing it's going to be really, really exciting. And hopefully he turns it on for his first grade debut. In the head-to-head -head market, you'll get $1.46 for the Dragons, $2.70 for the Broncos. Good odds for them if if you think that they're going to get this one. I am tipping the Bron uh, sorry the Dragons to win by four. On the Friday evening, the Tigers take on the Panthers from Leichhardt Oval in what is going to be a really, really interesting contest given all the personnel that is missing for the Panthers. Both sides will last start winners with the Tigers, as I mentioned earlier, beating the Dragons 34-18. They had the Dragons on the rope from the 15th minute when James Roberts opened proceedings with the first try of the game. 
And that Tigers back line were as good as we've seen in a long time. They were just no match for the drag. Uh, the Dragons were no match for them. Sorry, <laughs> other way around. Uh, it was really good to see. Some really good performances there. Some key kind of personnel reshuffling in that back line that I think is really suiting their style of play. I like Talau and the centers with James Roberts on the wing. I guess it kind of limits his ability to expose any of his own defensive deficiencies. And obviously he's a flyer and he's a great finisher. So I think it really is working well for them. Hopefully they can continue that momentum. Uh, for the Panthers, they flogged the Bulldogs 30 to four, which they're just doing that every week. It's no surprises there. They didn't concede a single point until the 78th minute, which I think is is a is a tremendous, a tremendous achievement. Obviously, they've shut out shut sh shut out a few teams this season, but it's good to see that they're being very consistent on the defensive side of things. They made 2,007 run meters compared to 1,373 from the Dogs. And they were getting downfield at an average of 42 meters per set, which is, which is some really serious momentum there. Um, I don't think they'll win a game this regular season. Or will they? Will they lose a game? I think maybe they will. See, I wrote that note there before I put my tips in this afternoon. So I'm going to con contradict myself here. I'm going to say that I don't think they're going to lose a game for the rest of the year, but I'm tipping the, the Tigers to win by one point via a Moses M by field goal in extra time. Shock horror. Let's work backwards. Let's talk about the team changes. For the Tigers, Alex Sifa starts in place of Joe Offer Hengawi, who is obviously playing for Queensland. For the Panthers, there are a bunch of changes. Please refer to the team list. There are too many to name. But the most poignant change that I will make note of is the new halves pairing of Matt Burton and Tyrone May. Tyrone May's obviously played a lot of halves for the Panthers previously. For Matt Burton, it's just another one of those opportunities for him to, to play where he wants to play, you know, at 5'8", and to really show what he can do in terms of, you know, helping steer the, that Panther side around the park in, in the absence of, you know, the best halfback in the world in Nathan Cleary. Head-to-head -head market, you get $2.55 for the Tiggers and $1.50 for the Panthers. Given that I'm tipping the Tigers, I think $2.55 is an, ex an outstanding odd to throw away. And if you're thinking the Tigers can do the do like I do, then get on that. Even whack it into a multi. Why not? Before I go through my preview of the last two games of the round, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, as I have once before, in fact, many times before asked, why not? Here's an opportunity to redeem yourself. Hit that, sub, hit that subscribe button, pound it, and then turn on your notifications so you can stay in the loop of all my content. And if you like this, give me a like. Helps with the algorithm and all the stuff that I don't quite understand yet that I'm trying to educate myself on. Do, a, do, a, do me a solid, man. Just subscribe and, and give me a little like. If you like it. If you don't like it, I don't want the like because it's fake and it's like, oh, I feel sorry for him. Look at, only if you like it, genuinely. Okay, Saturday night from Sunshine Coast Stadium, which is the Melbourne Storm's home away from Melbourne because they're always in, in COVID lockdown. So they're up at Sunshine Coast. They're playing the Gold Coast Titans. Uh, Storm, last, last start winners against the Broncos, 40-12. to 12. They continue to impress with key personnel out and Nico Hines continues to run the show like a boss. And if that game was a job interview for the Brisbane Broncos, which, again, no disrespect to the Brisbane Broncos, I feel like you wouldn't have to do too much to impress them given what they've got to deal with at the moment. Anything is a better option. No, but... This was Nico Hines' stat line. If he, if he ever wanted to impress Kevin Walters anymore, I don't think he could have. He had a try, two try assists, Three line breaks, two line break assists, six tackle breaks. Did I miss anything? Nah. 
I don't think so. Did really well. Did really well. Titans, last start, losers to the Sharks. Got absolutely hammered. 10 to 38. Stats-wise, there was really nothing to separate both sides. It was a very open game. There were lots of missed tackles from both units. Um, far too many. It was embarrassing. I think one of the sides, it was like 40-something to 50-something. It's just like, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Even Josh Henne, the Sharks coach, would have looked at that game afterwards. He would have been happy with the fact they got the win, but he would have looked at the defensive side and he would have just gone, that is not good enough. We're not going to beat these top-tier sides with that sort of performance. It might be okay for a Titan side that's kind of floundering at the moment. Gold Coast just didn't capitalize on their opportunities. They could have been in it. They weren't in it. They lost. That's how it goes. In terms of team changes for both sides, for the Storm, Kenny Bromwich replaces Marone's back rower, Felice Kafusi in the starting sign, uh, start, starting side, sorry. Dean uh, Iremea replaces Josh Adokar, who's also out on origin duty, but for the Blues. For the Titans, there are a stack of changes. Again, please refer to the team lists. But the most notable change is that Preston's Preston Campbell's son, Jaden, will be debuting at fullback for the Gold Coast. I don't know much about this kid, but I'm very interested to see how he goes and see if he's got some of his dad's pedigree. Obviously, Preston Campbell was a great for the Titans and just a great of the game. Really entertaining player to watch in his day. And if I'm not mistaken, 2001 Dallium winner. So he comes from good stock, Jaden. He does. In the head-to-head -head market, you get a dollar six for the Storm because, of course, why wouldn't you? Eight dollars fifty for the Titans. My tip is a Storm to win by twenty-two. Last game of the round: Knights Eels from McDonald's Jones Stadium. Now, this is a game that is going to. Uh, this is my game of the round. If there is a game of the round, some of these contests are uh, at best intriguing. I like the Tigers-Panthers clash too, but it's you don't get a really a, a good... If the Tigers win that game, there's an excuse there for the Panthers. Whereas for the Knights and Eels, they're not really missing too much personnel um, with respect to, to origin duties. A couple of players here and there, but it's a pretty even contest with this one here, I, I would like to think. Last starts winner... Uh, last start winners the Knights were against the Seagulls, 18 to 10. That was an upset. I didn't see that one coming. It was won on the death by Daniel Saifidi, and essentially that try sealed his state of origin selection. He was probably already in the team. I didn't have him in my side, but you know, whatevs. What do I know? Exactly, what do I know? I'm just a fan, and a fair weather fan at that. Don't get me started on this Canberra. Eels last start losers against the Bunnies, 20 to 38. That is a two game losing streak for the Eels. They need to pick their socks up. They really do. They're going to start losing touch with the top four if they don't win this week. A lot of teams have got the bye. Team change wise uh, for the Knights, Suaso Su replaces David Clemmer in the front row. Jacob Saifidi replaces his twin brother, Daniel, who's on Origin duty. And Brody Jones takes Tyson Frizzell's place in the back row. For the Eels, Reed Marnie um, has been named in the 19 jersey for Queensland. But if he doesn't play, he's going to be released back to the Eels and he will start at hooker. Dylan Brown and Regan Campbell-Gillard return from suspension. Murata Niakore replaces Blues bench for Junior Paulo. And Blake Ferguson has been dropped, which gives... Exciting youngster Hayes Dunster, a recall for the first time this season. In the head-to-head -head market, you will get $3.70 for the Knights and $1.27 for the Eels. I don't agree with those odds. I think they should be a little bit closer. Eels favorite, justified, but a bit closer. And I'm tipping the Eels to bounce back this week and win that game by six points. That's been the show for this week. Look out for my best bets segment. Sorry. Let's try that again. Look out for my best bets segment coming up a little bit later this week. And I will give you the heads up 
there will only be two videos this week. And as of releasing a video next week, I think I might wait until post origin to maybe do a post origin analysis. I need a bit of a week off. I need to do some re educating some re soul searching -y, whatever I need to do to get myself straight. It's been a long season so far and I've really loved your participation in terms of watching the video and giving me the feedback with the likes and the comments and all that stuff. Great work. I've gotten some really valuable feedback in the comment section that I'm going to take and I'm going to try and work on and build on to make this channel even better than it is. I'll see you in the next video.